people, 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 people. k e p a s a s a p a s e what they do. Now, the first thing that is popping in the news is that we see that the man that told Andrew h o l a n d s we are speaking about the Prime Minister and also the p o p o to go and XYZ their mother. Now we understand that Jamaica is going through a little crisis right now as it pertains to the big C. So, therefore, the government and the Ministry of Health and also the Popo is doing whatever they can to make sure that people stay safe and make sure so them minimize. We are speaking about this thing getting around, we are speaking about spreading. Some people, this man came out and he was very disrespectful. Him cuss all sort of BCC, Rete, Lele, Blue, Blah, b l e n g and was claiming that he is not coming off the street. So, anyways, it seems like he has had a change of heart, or it seems like he hired an attorney, and his attorney told him that the wise thing to do is to apologize. Or maybe the JCF and also Andrew h o l i s also placed a stipulation on his bail condition to make sure say, he apologized publicly. So, people, take a listen, take a look to what he has to say, and then I'm going to give my piece. My name is Alexander Shaw, attorney at law, and I represent Mr. Dean Mitchell. On Wednesday, April 1st, Mr. Mitchell made a video and that video went viral. You would have seen via different media platforms that the video in which Mr. Mitchell said some disparaging things about the constabulary force, the Prime Minister, and it was very disrespectful to Jamaica. And he has now recognized the implications, the seriousness of his actions, and he has now taken responsibility and would love to tender an apology to the people of Jamaica and to the Jamaica Constabulary Force, as well as our Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Holness. Yes, good evening, Jamaica. My name is Dave Mitchell. On Wednesday, April 1st, I made a video that is disgraceful and demeaning. I want to apologize sincerely to the Prime Minister, Honorable Andrew Wallace, to Jamaica, and to the Constable, Jamaica c o n s e r v a t i v e Force. <clears throat> My behavior was outright, outright and disrespectful. The things I said. Is not worthy to repeat, but I want to say I'm very sorry for saying all of those things. As a, re as a result, I want to sincerely apolog apologize to the Jamaica c o u n c i l o r Force, the Prime Minister, the hard working men, of the J men and women of the Jamaica c o u n c i l o r Force, and I want all Jamaicans to take this. Coronavirus, COVID 19, very serious and applied by the rules and regulations Mark said by the Prime Minister. All right, to all my friends, them, family, loved ones, all over Jamaica, I want to tell you the truth. This thing is not a joke thing, it's very serious. It's very serious. When I made the video, I was just, I was just a joke. And m a t t e r it very serious, but I want to listen to what the Prime Minister work with the them staying on the house because this thing all over the world. Italy, how much thousands of people were supposed to know already. I'm here telling you, they must try to keep us safe. I made a joke about it, and again, I'm very sorry and I apologize to the whole Jamaica, the JCF, and the Prime Minister, Honorable Andrew Wallace. Now, people, we see what the difference a couple of days made. We see a difference in the demeanor because people only think about the original video. He was acting gangster, he was acting tough, he was acting like him non t e c h n o chat. And now, people, we can't believe that this is the same person. We can't believe that this person has been transformed into a choir boy, into a saint. Some people, Oh, Uno said the man fully done. Oh, Uno said the man at 10, now I'm going to school, university, and Tanya Yard primary. People, this is somebody different. People, this man is now transformed. This man is now ready for society. This man could be the next prime minister.
or maybe not. So anyway, people, when we listen to his speech, we are speaking about the first part of the speech. May I for wonder if this is the same person that only claim that is fully done. People, why are you guys framing this person? Because he sounds so eloquent. He sounds like he attended some sort of Ivy League university. It seems like he was well schooled in the art of English. And um, people, was he reading from a script? Was he speaking from the bottom of his heart? Or was he reading from a paper? Was he just reading what the lawyer wrote for him? People, let me know what you think in the comment section. So anyways, like I said, he had some very colorful word for the Prime Minister and we are talking about the Popo and the Ministry of Health as it pertains to the protocol, as it pertains to whatever they say that the persons in Jamaica are supposed to do to make sure so them keep safe and secure and make sure that we minimize this big C. However, we saw that persons like to have their 15 minutes of fame on social media. We see that people will do anything for the hype. So people is like them doing it for the hype, they are doing it for the likes. So anyways, the good thing is that he has realized I am speaking about after getting pressure from the popo, after being in the custody of the popo, he has realized that he basically make a big boo boo, he make a big error, he make a big problem. He caused a lot of problem for his family. He basically embarrassed everybody, including himself, or specifically, or mostly himself. So, people, the good thing is that he actually apologize i don't know if it is sincere i don't know if he was forced by the prime minister and also the popo and his lawyer however we have to give credit where credit is due even if it is minimal credit point blank and period so people like we saw before in trinidad and tobago the government and the popo also stipulated that some person that was found to doing the same thing they were also led to doing an apology we are speaking about a public apology and like I said before in a prior video that I did, I think that this is the right thing for him to do and um, people so said, so done point blank and period so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up now people, before I move to the next part of my video, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. One word. Don't put any space between the words. And also subscribe to this channel. We are speaking about true Jamaica buzz. And when you subscribe, please to press the notification bell or icon. And also press all in the option. Now the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that Dancehall Arts, we are speaking about Vice Cartel, he lost his appeal yesterday. However, at the time when I did my video, the judges were speaking about the panel of three judges that basically made that decision. They did not give their judgment or gave the reason why they said that this guilty verdict was supposed to stay. So generally speaking, they said that even though Vives Cartel and his co-defendant's lawyers basically placed four grounds in which they thought that it should have been overturned, he said that it was not sufficient because even if there was no error and we are speaking about as it pertains to the phone location, we are speaking about tampering by Popo and we are also talking about jury misconduct. Even if those things were not taken into consideration or even if they were taken into consideration, it would not change the overwhelming we are speaking about the evidence that was in the case. So basically the judges are saying that none of these lawyers did not really put up any sort of grounds to say that any of these persons are innocent without a shadow of a doubt. They were basically trying to beat the case upon a technicality. So basically what the judges are saying is that none of these lawyers, we are speaking about the defense attorneys, none of them basically raised any sort of grounds to prove that any of these four persons, we are talking about Vives Carter, we are talking about Sean Stam, we are talking about Kahira Jones and also Andre St. John. Nobody raised any grounds to say that they are innocent without a shadow of a doubt. So basically they were trying to beat it on technicality. They were trying to beat it on prosecutorial misconduct. They were trying to beat it on jury misconduct and also bad evidence. So the judges are saying that, listen, none of that really counts because the evidence is overwhelming and due to the fact that there was also a key witness which the jury found credible. So people, we are speaking about all of the essential factors that led to a conviction. 
So the point that I am trying to make is that we have to wonder, we have to ponder, we have to basically put in consideration if these lawyers are actually hustling vice cartel because they think that he is rich. And um, people, I am not blaming anybody. I am not saying that these persons are doing this. I nah, say the lawyer them are doing it. Me just uh, say it puts some sort of question sign. Or maybe, do you think that they are sincere when they say that they feel like vice cartel is innocent and they feel like these... 14 grounds that they place in front of the court. We are speaking about the appeals court. Do you think that they are actually confident? Do you think that they are just hustling the game? Because people, at the end of the day, money is always the root of all evil. And people, this is my disclaimer again because I don't want any lawsuit. And the truth and the fact that I don't know the mindset, I don't know what these lawyers are thinking, and I am not versed in law, may just I say, based on what the judges are saying, I am speaking about the appeals judge, and based on what the lawyers are saying, we are speaking about it is on polar opposite side. So people, who oh, should we believe? Should we believe the more versed judges that are more versed in the art of law and rules and regulations? or should we believe a lawyer or should we believe a set of lawyers that are representing some defendant we are talking about vice cartel sean Stam, and the other two who should we believe and as a matter of fact it is not who we believe is the fact that there was already a conviction on the initial trial and also a next conviction or a confirmation we are speaking about as it pertains to the appeal so people we see who carries the most weight so people the question i want to ask is this do you think that these lawyers are hustling the game and people don't get it twisted don't get it misconstrued and i am not speaking specific to these lawyers i am just saying that a lot of professionals a lot of lawyers in jamaica they are some hustlers so in other words the only thing that they are praying is the money that is a priority and not their client not the fact that if they can win the case or lose the case and people any sort of lawyer can win a case if it is easy if the evidence is not overwhelming However, do you think that the evidence in the vice cartel's case was overwhelming based on the fact that there was a key witness, based on the fact that the jury found this key witness very credible, and based on the fact that there were also other evidence? So the point that I am trying to make is that even though this was a case of circumstantial evidence, the other evidence we are talking about, the physical evidence, we are speaking about the fact that you had a key witness and the jury deem him to be very, very credible because it seems like they believe every word that he said. And um, people, based upon the fact of everything that occurred in the case, based on what the prosecution is saying, and based on how these judges determine the outcome, we are speaking about the initial case and also the appeals case so in other words do you think that he had a better chance in the initial trial and this appeal versus the privy council because people we are talking about where we are in a uk we are talking about london rete lele blue blah bling so people answer this question do you think that vice cartel even stand a chance do you think that vice cartel was guilty without a shadow of a doubt do you think that vice cartel was railroad and basically get set up because of the fact that he is a scapegoat for everything that is going on and wrong especially as it pertains to these new millennials c-r-i-m-i-n-a-l-s people let me know what you think in the comment section and the next question that i want to ask and the thing that i found very suspicious is the fact that the government we are speaking about the popo they implemented a curfew just days before vice cartel's appeal decision people do you think that there is some sort of conspiracy because they thought that if he was found guilty or the guilty was confirmed the people them wouldn't basically revolt or the people them wouldn't take to the street and basically act a fool people let me know what you think in the comment section because people the truth and the facts that based on information coming from the news media there was basically nobody at the court we are speaking about at the court of appeal we are talking about on king street we are talking about downtown so people we see what a difference a couple of years made we are speaking about 2014 back to 2020 people as people lost interest are basically the big c is basically the topic of conversation and vice cartel is now relegated to a non-factor people let me know what you think in the comment section so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up